My junior year of college baseball was incredibly frustrating for me. And because of that, by season's end, I was totally fried. I was done. I wanted nothing to do with the game. And by the same token, I never thought about quitting, but I really needed to take some time off and, and step away and kind of see the big picture of things. And over that summer, I spent a lot of time talking on the phone with one of my good friends and one of my best teammates, Rigo Beltran. And he was a few years older than me, and that summer he was going to play his first year of professional baseball in the Mariners organization over in Arizona. And I remember this one phone call in particular where he asked me what my goals were for my senior year of college. And I told him I had thought about this because of my junior year was, was tough for me. I thought about what can I do to simplify everything and accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. So I'm sitting on the phone and I tell him, Rigo, I got it. I don't care how much I play, I don't care if I get drafted, I don't care about any of that, I don't care if I start. All I wanna do and all I care about is having fun. So I'm sitting on the phone, waiting for his just rah-rah response, and I hear nothing. And then his voice comes back on and says, Ben, that is a terrible goal. I drop the phone, and I'm thinking, first of all, He's supposed to be my, one of my best friends. He's supposed to be my guy. He's supposed to have my back. And the first thing he has to share with me is that's a terrible goal. I said, what do you mean that's a terrible goal? He says, Ben, look, I want you to have fun. I know, I know what happened your junior year. I know the frustration you went through. I know you wanted to play more. I know all of those things. But having fun is not the answer. It's not a good goal. Well, okay, why? He said, it's not a good goal because you can't measure it. And when he said those words, everything clicked for me. I began to realize that having fun is not a tangible goal. Having fun is a result of a tangible goal, of working towards something that you can measure. And so I thought about his words after that phone call. And I looked back on my career and wondered, at what points was I having the most fun? And regardless of where I was playing, who I was playing with, at what level in which I was playing, Every time that I was feeling the most fun, I was playing my very best. And so that was the foundation for my new goals, my new tangible goal. And that was to become the most consistently great baseball player I could possibly become. Now I worded that incredibly intentionally. I didn't just want to be consistent because I could be consistently bad and that's no good. And I didn't want to just be great because I felt like I already was great. And that's the truth. I was great at times and I was really bad at times. In my career, I struggled a lot with consistency. So I wanted to combine the two of being consistent and being great and mesh that into my new goal. And this is a good goal to have because I could measure it. I could make it tangible. And I could see out of four at-bats in a game, I could measure how many of those were good quality at-bats. How many times did I hit the ball hard? Was my swing consistently great? What about on defense? Was I making the plays, fielding it well, and hitting the guy in the chest with my throw? These were all things I can measure. And taking it a step further, I was able to implement a plan to work on every single day for each facet of my game, both physically and mentally, to help me get to that point of becoming the most consistently great baseball player I could possibly become. While becoming consistently great was my goal as a baseball player, your goals may be totally different, and that's okay. Let's say you wanna have a better work-life balance, which I think a lot of people are after, and something that I definitely work towards and try to practice every day. While we can't set out to have, just simply have a better work-life balance, what we can do is implement plans, tangible plans, that we can work on every single day to accomplish that, that will result in a better work-life balance. So what our goals can look like, for example, is to wake up earlier three times a week to get to the office, to get our work done, and get home earlier. Also, it can look like cooking breakfast for our family five days a week or taking a day trip on the weekends. We can measure these different things to see how well or poorly we are accomplishing what we want to. If we only get to the office two out of the three days, we can look at what happened along the way and understand why we did or didn't make it. And if we didn't get to cook breakfast because we had to go into work or, or deal with something at work, again, we can address those problems, make the adjustments, and put ourselves in a better position to achieve that result that we're after. In this case, having a better work-life balance. One of the most important things I think you can do for yourself to help you develop a better relationship with goals is to have a certain level of perspective when working towards achieving them. I'll share a little story with you to, to better explain what I mean. So one summer in college, I was, I was working to gain 10 pounds of muscle. And that's a very reasonable goal for a college athlete, a young growing boy like myself. 
and at the at the beginning of the summer I did all the necessary research I wanted to do and needed to do I looked up what I should be eating, how I should be eating, when I should be eating, how to train, when to train, where to train, how to sleep, when to sleep, where to sleep, all the things you could possibly imagine, I was looking up and I made a plan for because I wanted to leave no stone unturned. And so before I began on this journey, I stepped on the scale to get my base weight, looked down and I was 200 pounds. This was a great starting point. And so that summer progressed. And as it went on, I was feeling bigger, better, faster, stronger, and with that I began to experience a greater sense of confidence. So at the end of the three months before I headed back to school, I stepped back on the scale for my final weight, feeling good, feeling the best I had ever felt. Step on, I looked down, and I was crushed. 205 pounds. There was no way in my mind that this was feasible. I, I stepped back off the scale, stepped back on, the, it recalculated, still 205 pounds. And I'm scratching my head for answers thinking, I did everything that, that the internet, that the doctors, that the trainers, they said I should do, and I still fell short of my goal. I set out to gain 10 pounds and I only gained five pounds. Now I want you to think for yourself for a second. In my situation, would you consider that to be a success or a failure? You have to answer this for yourself honestly. Now without hearing your answer, I would venture to say that you gave me the benefit of the doubt. You said, hey, you know, you didn't make it. You gave the old college try. You should be proud of yourself. You didn't gain the 10 pounds, but you still gained five pounds. You're five pounds closer to your goal. Now, if that was your answer and that's your thought, you're absolutely right. The problem is that same benefit of the doubt that you just gave to me, we rarely give to ourselves. It's so important on the journey to accomplish what we want to accomplish that we take pride in our progress. Whether it's a huge giant leap forward or just a small baby step, we need to be proud of each step forward. In a boxing match, when the bell rings to end a round, where do the fighters go? They go to their corners. And what happens in their corners? They get coached up, they get the blood wiped off their face, maybe some water, maybe some teeth put back in. And all around they get supported, all for the purpose of what? Getting sent back out into the ring to fight some more when the bell rings to start the next round. You may not be a boxer, but you still need to have a corner in your life. Your corner can look like mom, dad, aunts, uncles, grandparents, any family members, close friends, teammates, teachers, coworkers, bosses, employees, mentors. It can look like just about anybody who has your best interests in mind, wants to support you, wants to love you, and someone who can help hold you accountable just as you hold yourself accountable. Having that strong support system plays a huge role in accomplishing your goals. If you feel like you don't have any goals and you're feeling lost and like you don't necessarily have an aim or a purpose, Understand that that's an okay place to be. I know there's a lot of external pressure that gets put on us through social media, through TV, through movies, whatever it may be, where we have to feel that we have to fit into this certain mold. But understand that if you don't have it all figured out, it's okay. But if you are looking for that level of direction in your life, start with the things that you enjoy doing. Find the passions in your life and pursue those and work towards getting better every single day and becoming the best version of yourself in those areas. And again, in the same way that it's okay if you feel like you don't have any goals, it's also okay if you feel like you don't know what you're passionate about. So one of your goals can become to try new things and you can make it tangible by saying, I'm gonna try X amount of new things every day, every week, every month, every year, whatever it may be. And you can measure your growth and progress within that. And then by doing that, you'll find things that you're passionate about and you'll want to and have a desire to improve in those areas. And then you'll feel better guided on your journey and feel that sense of purpose that you were after in the first place. Now take a look at the goals in your life and think about whether they're tangible or not. Are they thoughts, emotions, or feelings, or are they things that you can measure, things that you can work towards every single day? Ask yourself, do I have a plan in place that will help me progress on my journey? And then remember to always, always, always take pride in your progress, whether you're taking huge giant steps forward or baby small steps. Anytime you're moving in the right direction, it's an opportunity to be proud.